Okay, for this session, uh, we are going to have uh, hopefully two speakers with regard to talking about issues uh, surrounding Smart Grid. And the first person up is Dan Delory, and he is the president of the Demand Response and Smart Grid Coalition. Dan? Okay, people who know me say that I can't even say hello in six minutes. So um, I'm going to. Right, right. I'm going to try and do something a little bit different so that we have some time for Q&A. Uh, first of all, you can go to the website, DRSG Coalition. You can see the membership. It's very diverse. Folks like uh, Google, GE, Honeywell, also a lot of startups that you've probably never heard of. Okay, so. Okay, energy efficiency. We all know what that is. Best example is a more efficient light bulb. Here's where my production budget ran low, okay? We also have the biggie, and that's other types of energy efficiency, the energy efficiency of a power plant, the energy efficiency of transmission. If you ever took a physics class, you know it's harder to push things across a wire when the weather is really hot out. All sorts of different efficiencies in the electricity system. The new kid on the block is smart grid. Now, there's a lot of reasons uh, I could give as to why the grid is not smart now. But I'm going to do this one, okay? 10 to 20 percent of the total electricity costs in the U.S. are attributable to only 100 hours on the system during the year. Now just, again, one example. And this is because I would say almost all of you, if not all of you out there, pay the same price per kilowatt hour on the hottest summer afternoon as you do on a cool autumn evening, okay? So obviously, that leads to extra costs on the system, okay? So now you have another new kid come along called demand response, okay? And demand response is different than energy efficiency, but it's kind of like a twin or a sibling. Whereas energy efficiency is kind of your baseline efficiency and your static efficiency, it's not dispatchable, and it's also sometimes hard to measure. Now along comes smart meters and other smart grid technologies, and you can suddenly, in that control room, on a hot summer afternoon, instead of turning on another power plant, you can reach out to a virtual power plant that may consist of thousands of customers and get the same effect on the system. Okay. So how do you do that? One way is through price signals. Okay. Let's have a higher price during that hot summer afternoon. Also through information, and this is the real exciting part that ties it to en uh, energy efficiency, and that is because just by giving people information, the pilots and the deployment so far show that customers, even if they're not on time-based pricing, will become 5 to 15 percent more energy efficient overall. Okay. For those of you who are staff in the office, Remember ENO, because there was a bill last Congress, hopefully there'll be one this Congress, that deals with trying to get that 5 to 15 percent by providing all customers with information. And my last uh, cue card here is O. And that's because really what we're after is optimization. So you want to do DR, you want to do energy efficiency, and you want to make sure that all the information, all the controls, all the sensors, all the monitors, all of that is available. And what my final plea to you all is don't get stuck in an energy efficiency silo and don't talk to the smart grid and demand response guys over here. We're all in this together. We've got to put this together to get the biggest bang for our buck. Let me ask, a have, is Lori here? Is Lori come? Okay. I've got extra case, cards if you want here, me. Here you go. <laughs> I'm always prepared, and that's part of the whole thing. Uh, so if Lori's not here, then we will take uh, a couple questions. Sure. Okay. Um, how do uh, electric vehicles figure into the smart grid in terms of um, customers being able to provide that power, that battery right. source? Yeah, electric vehicles, uh, some people call it demand response on wheels. I mean, you have the ability to, and, and actually I'm going to use my card, okay, which stands for renewable energy. Over 80% of the wind resource in the U.S. is only available at night. So use that wind 
to inject electricity into that car while it's sitting in your garage and then take it out from there during the peak period the next day. I mean, just to be simplistic about it. So it's a big game changer, electric vehicles. Yes? Uh, how can smart grids be protected against cyber terrorism? Well, by a number of ways. I mean, by, I, mean I can get into technical architecture, which I could only go so far on, but um, there are layers of security that can be built starting all the way with the smart meter on your home that protect it or are designed to protect it to be able to not get into the control room or into a power plant or any of that. So it's a big issue. It's being dealt with in the Congress right now. Um, but I can't go too far in terms of the technical aspects of that. Any other questions? Yeah, sure. Um, isn't the national action plan supposed to be kind of pulling all of this together? Well, thank you. I just happen to have a cue card for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good job. In 2007, Congress passed the Energy um, uh, ESA, um, and uh, included in that was direction to DOE and the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to develop a national action plan on demand response, to do the things in terms of education of consumers, to develop new technical resources to, to allow us all to get to the big O. Okay, and with apologies to Sesame Street, I'll take my cards away. Very, very efficient. Thanks. <laughs>